All right, high point chemistry, let's have your calculators ready. It is time to do some calculations with Charles Law. All right, so Charles Law is represented by volume over temperature. Volume over temperature is a constant number. So if we increase the temperature, what happens to the molecules? They move faster, we have more collisions, and you will increase the volume. So thinking about something, how can you increase the volume, right? So think of a balloon that has um, particles stuck in it, okay, and the balloon begins to expand. Think of um, a piston and a cylinder, okay, a piston and a cylinder, right? You increase the temperature, maybe put a little spark there. What happens to the piston? The piston goes up and the volume inside the cylinder would get bigger, right? All right, a little sloppy there, but think of increasing the temperature, making a balloon expand, a balloon expanding, or the piston moving in a cylinder and causing the cylinder to have more volume inside. So temperature and volume are directly related all right, and then you need to sketch a graph on your worksheet. All right, I'll do a little tiny one here, right? Should look like that. Should have an increasing linear slope. The formula, volume one over temperature one, we're gonna have a scenario where we're going to change, okay, something, all right? The volume or the temperature, okay? So volume one over temperature one equals volume two over temperature two. So that is your formula that you'll use for this entire worksheet. We're gonna go over the front of the worksheet where it says, and this is actually right out of your book as well. A sample of gas occupies 430 milliliters when it is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What volume will it occupy when it is at standard temperature, which is zero degrees Celsius? So every single problem, please do this, V1, equals V2 equals T1 equals and T2 equals, okay? I will take points away, okay? Please write this down for every single problem. You have four of them. Write down V1, V2, T1, T2, all right? And we're gonna identify what they are. So V1 is 430 milliliters. V2, it's asking, all right, so put a question mark there. T1 is 25 degrees Celsius because it says it is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And then it's asking what volume will it occupy when it's at a new temperature, okay? Looks like the temperature's going down of zero degrees Celsius. All right, now we're going to plug these numbers into this formula, but before we do, we can never, ever, 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 ever use temperature in Celsius. We need to change it to Kelvins. And it's very, very simple. All you do is add 273. So this one becomes 298 Kelvins, and zero degrees becomes 273 kelvins. All right, now what we're going to do is take these three numbers and substitute them in for every variable in the formula. So V1 is 430 milliliters. T1, we don't know, or we do know, sorry. T1, we know. T1 is 298 kelvins. V2 we don't know, so we just write the variable for that. T2 is 273. All right, so what we are going to do is cross multiply and divide. All right, so you can multiply both sides by 298 and 273, and then you end up dividing. Okay, this is Mrs. Hoffbauer's shortcut, and you can do this, all right. This is my math shortcut. 
we have two numbers opposite, and then we have a number and a variable opposite. So I want you to take and circle the two numbers that are opposite, okay? Leave the variable and the number that are, there, where there's variable, leave that uncircled. Write these two out, 430 times 273, all right? Because we're cross multiplying them. And we're going to divide by 298. If you did the algebra, you would end up with this. All right. So you can do that. We're going to take and multiply 430 times 273 equals and then divide by 298. And we will get 393.9. Okay. And we're going to round that up to 394. All right, and don't forget our units of volume. In this case, our milliliters. How do I know they're milliliters? Because volume one is in milliliters, so volume two has to be in milliliters. I cannot change the units of volume. All right. Let's take a look at number two. I'll read that. Number two says, a two liter sample of air is collected at 298 kelvins, then cooled to 278 kelvins. What is the new volume of the air? All right. I'm going to do the same thing every single time, V1. V2, T1, and T2. Make sure you do not skip this step for um, high point chemistry for, for my class. Please don't skip this step. Volume one, and the problem is 2.0 liters. Volume two, we don't know it. It says, what is the volume? We put a question mark there. Temperature one, 298. Kelvins. Temperature 2, 278 Kelvins. All right, because it says it's collected at 298 and then cooled to 278. What is the new volume? All right, so volume 1 and temperature 1, let's put those in 2.0 liters over. 298 kelvins equals, okay, I'm just copying and substituting, V2, we don't know, T2, we do know, 278, all right, so again, circle the numbers that are opposite, all right, we don't know this number, so we're not circling it. We're circling the numbers that are opposite, and we're going to multiply them. 2.0 times 278 divided by 298. So we multiply 2 times 278 equals, and then divided by 298 equals 1.865. Well, I have two sig figs, so I'm going to make this rounded to 1.9, all right, and liters. Okay, that's my answer, 1.9 liters. The new volume, V2, equals 1.9 liters. Last example, if a gas has a volume of 0.675 liters at 35 degrees Celsius, what is the temperature if the volume changes to 0.535 liters. All right. Okay, again, V1, V2, T1, and T2. Don't skip that step. Okay, volume one. We don't know. It says if the volume changes to. We don't know volume one. We know that it changes to 0. 535 liters. 
we know, oh, it does tell you at the beginning, sorry, I'm skipping around here. It starts at 0 0.675, 0 0.675 liters, okay, has a volume of 0.675 liters at temperature, 35 degrees, okay, Volume 2 was 0.535 liters. We don't know temperature 2. All right. We want to plug these numbers in, but first we need to change the temperature to kelvins. Okay, for all the gas laws, whenever there's temperature, it that needs to be in kelvins. Okay, equals 308. Okay, the gas law answers don't come out correctly unless your temperature is in, is in kelvins. So, um, V1 right here, 0 0.675 liters over T1, 308 kelvins equals V2, V2 is on the top, 0 0.5 three, five liters over T2. All right, and just double check while you write that down. Yep, yep. Okay, looks like we have everything set up just fine. All right, I'm gonna do something a little different. Like not circling this way. These are the numbers, okay, 308, 1.535, those are the numbers that are diagonal from one another. So I'm gonna circle those numbers, okay? I'm gonna leave the variable, always leave the variable outside. And I'm gonna multiply these two numbers, 308 times 0.535 divided by the number that's not circled, Alright, so 308 times 0.535 equals, and then divided by 0.675 equals 244.118 and so on and so on. So our new temperature is 244, I'll put it down here, 244. Kelvins. And if we wanted to find the temperature in Celsius, we would have to subtract 273, but it's not asking for that, so we'll leave it at 244 Kelvins. All right, so if you have any questions, I'll see you on Zoom to work on the homework. If you're struggling, please let me know.